All right, so now we have a couple of different rules that we can look at. We have the NPV, net present value, and then we have the IRR, the internal re rate of return. We have these two measures, and we're trying to figure out which one of these is, is actually going to be superior, okay? So a general rule that, that is like to be used by academics is that we like to use the NPV. Whatever has the highest NPV is the one we're going to do. Now, if these are independent projects, right, I can do both of them, right? Let's say I'm a, I'm a restaurant and I have project A is going to be putting up a new sign outside and project B is going to be getting new new chairs and tables in, in the restaurant, right? Those are, those, I can do both of those. And if they have both have positive NPVs like we have right here, right, these are both positive, okay? Both of them have positive NPVs at a 10% required return. So, yeah, we're going to do both of them, okay? And same thing, both have a positive IRR. Now, remember, the IRR is when we set the NPV equal to zero, right? So just to, just to clarify here, we have a couple different projects. Uh, we have Project A, Project B. Both of them cost the same amount. They both cost, at the beginning, a $3,000 investment. Project A is going to pay off sooner. Project B is going to pay off more later, right? So if we're looking at the two of them, right, we have to we say, all right, both of them are positive. Let's go out and do both of them. However, there's going to be a lot of times where we have projects that are mutually exclusive, Okay, and if you remember that mutually exclusive just means that we they cannot be both contained within the same subset. So uh, if we're looking at these two different projects, right, we get two of them. Okay, and we're saying, all right, we can only pick one, right? Let's say we're looking at a new delivery van, right? These are two delivery vans. We only need one delivery van, right? So which of, of these delivery vans are we going to do? One of them is, is, is better right off the bat. One was better later down the road. Um, one of the rules that, that I like to use and a lot of people like to use is that whichever one has the highest NPV is the one that we are going to choose, the one we are going to select. Okay. However, there are times when there might be another project that might be, might be better. Right. So if we look at this, is that let's say that we had a, uh, a discount rate of 0%. If we had a discount rate of 0%, right, meaning that we're not discounting anything, is that project B would be superior, right? If So at 0%, project B is superior, right, to A because it has more cash coming in. Okay, so the way we can do this is that we can actually create a cross some crossover profiles, okay? We can create crossover profiles that are going to look like this, and we can say, all right, at what point... Is it going to be better to go with another project, depending on what our required rate of return is, right? Because that's kind of one of those soft features that managers can say, all right, this is the return I have to get, okay? So this is going to be the crossover point, and if they don't cross over, it's going to be the one that has the just the higher payouts in general. So if we're looking at these two projects here, is they were going to say they have a crossover point at 8.1%, okay? And that means at 8.1%, both of them will have an NPV. This is uh, NPV profiles. Okay, Is that at 8.1%, at and I encourage you to do the math here, but if we plug in 8.1% for all of these, these projects right here, these two projects, we would show an NPV of $268. Okay, So at that point is that we're indifferent. If we had a, an interest rate of 8.1%, of we'd be indifferent between projects A and projects B. Now, at the point where they cross zero, right? Remember at the point where we set the uh, set these cash flows equal to zero with that discount rate, we solve it. These points right here are going to be at the IRR points, right? So this is A is the top one. B is the one on the bottom. A crosses at 13.1%. B crosses at 11.4%. Okay, And so as we know with the IRR is that at, at any rate, we will um, invest in these projects at any rate that is lower, right, or excuse me, um, if our required return is lower than the IRR, we will invest in these projects, okay? So um, basically what we have to look at here is we have to say, all right, what, what is our actual required return, right? If, if we don't really have high expectations, if this is not a, um, a high risk endeavor, right? Let's say that we have an interest rate. If our interest rate is less than 8.1%, all right, so 8.1% is that threshold, right? And if we have an interest rate, if our required return is less than 8.1%, which project should we choose? Well, if we look back here over at less than 8.1%, which one is actually higher? Which one gives us the higher NPV? 
And just to clarify here, that vertical axis here is NPV. The horizontal axis here is uh, discount rates. Okay. So which NPV is higher at a rate less than 8.1%? Well, what we can see here is that the B line is higher. So that means that we should select project B because at a, at a discount rate less than 8.1%, we're going to have a higher NPV with project B. Now, if we have a return greater than 8.1%, right, that's going to show us here A, A has a higher NPV at interest rates greater than 8.1%. So we should end up going with project A if our rate is above 8.1%. But what about if it equals 8.1%? Then that means we can say A or B, right? Because both of them have the same net present value, okay? Um, so what we're just trying to show here is that mutual exclusivity, right? Is that if we're saying that the two projects, we cannot do them both at the same time, then we're going to typically choose the one that has the higher MPV, okay? But it really does depend on our discount rate, all right? And as we'll see next, is that we're going to go in and look at, at what practitioners actually do, what people down in the trenches that are actually making decisions and businesses actually do.